First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. Begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. You have an activated pipe in which that produced this black chemical called melanin. We, what we did was gave a hard line in the sand between the different definitions of esoteric study and exoteric study. Playtime is over. Peace, peace. Back once again with First Order Radio, your host, Dr. Aline Bay. I'm getting ready to bring up my co-host, Brother Fahim. Are you here, brother? Peace, peace. Please, how you been holding it down? You, I'm glad that you've been holding it down for the last few weeks while we've been building, Appreciate trying to get things straight. All right. No you problem. Have no you problem been enjoying yourself? Right. Yes, have sir, you been sure enjoying yourself? Been enjoying okay. myself, having the ball. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. That's all that matters. All right. All right. So we're going to get into tonight is um some healing information. Um. As a matter of fact, we have our event coming up this weekend, September 19th, 20th, and the 21st, on um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And for those who is part of our email, you have received the agenda of what we're going to be doing. Um, we're going to go to the agenda right quick and read a little bit of it. And then once we do that, um, we're going to get into some healing information. Is that all right with you, Brother Fahim? I'm about to fine with me, brother. Okay, okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right, so everybody know that we got the event, the Healing Wings Institute Health and Wellness Expo this weekend. Once again, September the 19th, 20th, and the 21st. All right. All right, for anyone who needs directions, email us at Royal House. 777 at gmail.com. That's R O Y A L H O U S E 777. That's three sevens, the numeral, at gmail.com. All right. So make sure y'all email us and um, we can get that information out to y'all as soon as possible. All right. Because time is short. We've got two more days before the event. And um, we want to make sure that, you know, we get a few people to come on out. 
That's the um thing, so that y'all can learn some of this higher science. For those who got the flyer, you know, we say we're going to learn internal power techniques, the science of breath, qigong, tai chi, pranic healing, and tantra kriya yoga. These are things in which that I've been trained in for the last 20 years by um, several master teachers. Um, one in particular was Crown Prince Ramesses Abel Bay, later known as Hutan Tupac Bay as well as also Grand Master Sanyata Saraswati. Um, both have passed on, um, but have not been forgotten. And of course, you know, for those who want to learn um, Reiki, um, we have Ushi Reiki, Tibetan Reiki, and Shekon Reiki, or Sekmak Reiki, in which that you're going to learn levels one, two, and three, or the three degrees of Reiki. And understand that just... 15 years ago, Reiki, to become a master practitioner or a master teacher, cost well over $10,000. Mm. Just Reiki 3, you know, just to become a Reiki 3 master practitioner or teacher by itself, cost over $10,000 just 15 years ago. Wow. Okay. And that's not talking about learning the science of breath that goes along with it or the qigong that goes along with it or the tai chi, which enhances the um, flow of um, chi or ki or prana energy or not even learning the pranic healing, basics, nor advanced forms, um, nor the cobra um, breath technique, which, of course, um, you know, was given to my wife and I um, by Master Sanyata Saraswati. Um, but this information, you know, is very valuable for those who want to learn how to heal and how to stay healthy and well. You know, and a lot of people, you know, do well with just talking about the food or talking about the water. And how we need, of course, you know, the foods, of course, the raw foods are best because they're electrical food, the water, alkaline, mm-hmm. purified, or spring water um, or is the best water. Um, we understand those things, you know, coming from, once again, a secondary means. However, the primary source of life and energy is the intake by breath of prana, coming from what we call stellar or cosmic or solar energy. Right? That's the primary energy. All right? Um, understand that. You know, remember God blew the breath of life into the nostrils of man and made man a living soul. That's right there in Genesis. I believe what is the, um, I think it's the first chapter, the 27 verse or something like that. So we got to understand, you know, what we're dealing with. That's the reason why it's in the book of Genesis. And one of the first things mentioned besides for the creation of the um, cosmos, the planets, moon, you know, so forth and so on, is God blowing, you know, into the nostrils of man and making man a living soul. You know, so we understand that if you want to find God, being that, you know, he, she, it blew itself into each and every one of us, then we must find our way through the science of breath because it was blown into the nostrils. So that means mm. it's through the breath in which that you will find God. Mm. And we know that the mediator between the higher self and the lower self is the breath itself. The breath is the mediator. And, of mm-hmm. course, we know that, you know, you know that, you know, uh, many of our Christian friends, you know, speak about Jesus being the mediator, but they got to understand is that the letter J did not come into existence until the 1500s, and mm-hmm. his name was Yahshua, and the word Yahshua is Hebrew, which means O oh, salvation, O oh, oh, he who saves, but mm-hmm. the word Shu, which is in between Yah and the way, which, of course, in the Old Testament, you had Yahweh, who was the God of the Old Testament or the old life. But the God of the new life or the New Testament is Yahshua, all right, in which that the word shu 
as we know within the ancient comedic teachings, was the mediator or the middleman in between Geb and Newt. So Yah and Wei actually are characters of Geb and Newt, essentially, and Shu was the mediator between the two, symbolized mm-hmm. as the lower self, as Geb, which is Seb, and the higher self, which is Newt, which is symbolic to the mother of virtues as we find within the 101s. And the 102s, where it says, um, how many selves are there? There's two selves, mm-hmm. the lower self and the higher self. It says, you know, you know, well, you know, what do they do, Brother um, Fahim? Tell me what they do. Yeah, everything <laughs> that lose and lust. Right, right, hey, right. That's that's the lowest that's, self. That's the lowest right? self. Everything you know? that arms. Right, right. It's exactly. That arms, you know, exactly. Right, you right. Know? right. And the higher self is the mother of virtues, the love, mercy, and right. So, um, symbolized by Newt, who was the mother goddess, in which they would get the word um, Newt, or nut, as in the source of life, and also, which is a seed, as well as also um, nurture, all right, or nature, or netter. So, it was essentially saying that when you reach your higher self, you have become a god. Essentially, or a force to be reckoned with, or a force mm-hmm. of nature, because the word God, um, or Elo, or Ela, which becomes Allah, or Allah within Arabic, means power or force. All right. So um, understand where this force lies, and. The force is symbolically what we would call the soul. The power would be the breath. The breath is what awakens the soul or that force within you. Because that power is changeable. And the changeable factor within you or the frequencies or your endocrine glands that we refer to within the Sanskrit as the chakras, which are the wills mm-hmm. within the wills or the wills of thought, like color, and sound. Mm-hmm. In which that, of course, is mentioned within the book of Ezekiel or the book of Daniels, which is talking about the will within the wills. That is symbolic right. of the zodiac sign, you know, of the swirling of the planets and their rotation and revolution as they claim around the sun, but also the solar system as it goes through. Um, in its rotation through the 12 zodiac signs. Well, as above, so below. Mm-hmm. Well, what happens is, is that you have an elliptical pattern called the Kundalini, as well as also your DNA. And as the Kundalini raises up, uh, more than 10% usage of your DNA, which most average person only use 10%, the other 90% is non coded or not use the Kundalini give you the ability to tap into that unused portion of DNA as well as also the average person only use 10% of their brain so the other 90% is dormant so the Kundalini also give you access to the other 90% usage of the brain too so the Kundalini is very powerful and the way to awaken it is through various mutras which is or mantras as well as um as they say, chustras or positions, you know, in which that helps to activate the kundalini, all right? Um, within Islam, they would be called rakats, all right? Of course, you would have um, takbir, kiyam, ruku, um, saja, jalsa, you know, so forth and so on. But these various positions help awaken. That's why it's called salat in in um, Islam or in mm-hmm. Arabic. The word salat means fire or to raise up. That's no coincidence because the word shu also means to raise up mm. or empty force. Mm-hmm. So that's no coincidence. So it's telling you that through the the correlation of the breath and with the various movements of the body, positions, 
called rock hearts or sutras. It awakens the dormant part of yourself, which is known as the mother goddess principle or the word kutalini, which means um, essentially the serpentine fire. And so when we look at the ancient Egyptians or Kemites or Temerians, we will find on their crowns the risen serpent, which Jesus spoke of the fact that he would be like Moses and lift up the serpent in the wilderness. Symbolically, Jesus was the serpent. That's what he that's what he was supposedly here for, allegorically, was to mm-hmm. redeem us from the depths of hell. In other words, from our lower self. <laughs> From this material plane or realm To be lifted up into the heavens The sky which is symbolically to The head Or the crown chakra Or the Mm -hmm. third eye Which is the sky or the heaven And so you must reach Heaven in physical form Before you can reach a heaven Externally Once again as above so below As within so without That is the supreme axiom Of life is the mm-hmm. law of correspondence, along with six other laws, which are called the laws of Tahuti or Jehuti. Right? And that is the origin of the word Judea. That is the origin of the word Judea. That is the origin of the word Jew. All right? So when the Jews say that they are Jewish, they are saying that they are the studiers or the students of the laws of Jehuti. Essentially, which deals with these, which still actually, Tahuti is said they have written 42 books or the Emerald Tablet, or, and was called also within the Greek terminology Hermes Trimagestus, in which that um, he was also called Mercury or Quicksilver within the Greco Roman um, understanding. So, Kundalini, which that's actually what that is all symbolic to, the Quicksilver. The Mercury, because Kundalini, as it goes up the, and becomes part of what's called the cerebral fluid, which is the, um, before that, it goes from the prostate to the spinal fluid. It is actually a whitish gray color, all right, in which that a silvery or mercurish looking color. So hence the term Quicksilver or the term Mercury. All right, that is that is what Kundalini is, and the Kundalini produces not evolution but revolution. All right, and there's higher senses in which that comes. If you speak about the fact that there's five senses, seeing, touching, tasting, smelling, hearing, then there's five senses in which that the Kundalini expands into what is called hypersensory perception or extrasensory perception. So for hearing, you have clear audience. For sight, you have clairvoyance. For touch, you have sight chemistry. For smell, you have clear um, clear sentience. For taste, you have clear guestance. So these higher senses is activated through the Kundalini coming up through what is called the Shushuna, which is the hollow area of the back, electrifying the 31 plus 2 nerves, the Ida and the Pingala, up the spinal column, 33 vertebrates, as in Jesus Christ being 33 years old, in which it is said that he died on the cross at the age of 33 on Mount Golgotha or Mount Calvary, which the word Golgotha, Mean the place of the skull, which is talking about specifically at the back of the head, which is at the medulla oblongata. When the Kundalini reaches the medulla oblongata, you shed your old self, which is your old skin, which is um, the lower traits of oneself, which would be the lower self, which does what? Lutinous, murder, and everything that harms. Those mm-hmm. things are eradicated within on oneself. And that energy proceeds up into the electrifying the 12 pairs of cranial nerves that sits around the pineal gland in a circle, 
Hence, Jesus at the Last Supper with his 12 disciples, or the sun going around or through the 12 zodiac signs, or King Arthur and his 12 knights. This is all symbolic to the Kundalini electrifying the 12 pair of cranial nerves, which the word 12 pairs, pairs means two. So 12 times two actually comes to 24. In which that, as you read within the book of Revelations, it speaks about the 24 elders who pray and around the throne of God day and night. And they cast down their golden crowns before God saying hallelujah or amen. That is all symbolic to when those 12 pair of cranial nerves are fully activated, it proceeds on to the crown or to the crown chakra, or well as what we call the throne of God, which is the pineal gland itself, is the throne of God. That is also known as the Lamb of God. The car is the French philosopher told us that the soul is embedded inside of the pineal gland. So the soul is God, for the soul is immortal, forever, eternal, everlasting. Omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. The soul has the exact same qualities as the external God in which that you've been taught to worship. Which your Bible tells you that greater is he within you than he that is in the world. So that means that you're already effed up from the beginning. Because you have forsaken the God within you, which is the one God within you, and you have begun to worship externally the gods outside of you. So hence, yes, in the Old Testament, it tells you that God is a jealous God because you have given all your energy to something outside of yourself, looking in search of something outside of yourself. You're looking mm-hmm. for God up in the sky. You're looking for God uh, um, everywhere outside of you. You waiting for a white Jesus to come back and save you. You waiting for now extraterrestrials to come out of spaceships to come and save your ass. This is what is really going on. Instead of looking inside of yourself mm-hmm. and realizing where the real God dwells, the real Elo, Ela, the seven Elohim, which are the seven chakras, the seven churches, the seven stars. The seven candlesticks, the seven thunders, even the seven plagues. If the energy improperly hits you, mm-hmm. you must learn how to open the seven seals. That is what the seven seals is actually referring to, is you activating your seven chakras or what is called medically your endocrine gland system. What helps with the balancing of your endocrine gland system is what is called bioplasma, which actually is a combination of 12 mineral cell salts that vitalize the cellular health and function of the body. These 12 salts, or what is called 12 nutritives, muscle, cell, blood salts, help with the balancing of the endocrine gland so that you grow from a 7 chakra system to a nine chakra system and eventually to a 12 chakra system which if you go to the book of revelations it tells you that the son of man had in his right hand seven stars that's in the first chapter but by the 12th chapter it grows to 12 stars around the crown of the woman who sat upon the throne with the sun above her head and the moon below her feet in which that has been said to be Fatima within Islam and Mary within Christianity, which is actually both in the same because if you ask the Catholic Church, they speak of the Lady of Fatima as being Mary. Hmm. Now, why would they have Fatima as the Lady of the Catholicism when Fatima was allegedly the daughter of Prophet Muhammad? Oh, shit. <laughs> Something's wrong. Uh-oh. Uh Uh-oh. Something's wrong. So basically what we come to find out 
is that the word Fatima means the opening, as it is part of the word Fati or Fatiha, which is mm. actually the first surah in the Quran. It was originally the fifth, but now it's been moved to the first surah in the Quran, in which that there's a principle in which that is used. There's seven stanzas or seven verses. All right. Or ayats of the surah, in which that each one ends with an ayin sound, a a y i n or a i n sound, as in the ayin sof ayin um ayin ayin sof ayin sofi er, which actually is nothing more than the acronym for Osar, who is the Lord of the Perfect Black. So hence triple stage darkness, which is the Three trimester period of the woman pregnancy and the child inside of the womb developing before it be brought to light or come to shore or to be moored into the earthly form to become a vessel for the soul. So this is dealing with women principles, feminine principles that we're talking about. Because all of this is kundalini, the all-pervading essence of the universe, the all-pervading energy of the universe is kundalini. Kundalini or prana kundalini, as it is slowed down, is the color red, such as it says that, that there's life in the blood. All of the African religions, whether it's Yoruba whether it's Akan or Ifa, as we would say, um, for the Yoruba, Ifa, or whether it's Udan, whether it's the Congo, right? So whether it's the various Palo, um, Palos or Palo Mayambe, whatever the case is, we understand is that life is in the blood. And that's the reason why blood is red, because it is the physical manifestation of prana, in which that when you study Roy G. Biff, you will find that from violet, which is the fastest light of the spectrum, of the visible spectrum, as it slows down, it transforms to indigo, it transforms to blue, it transforms to green, it transforms to yellow, it transforms to orange, it transforms to red. So hence, the word Adam or Adama, when you do your research in Hebrew, it means red. Or blood. So when the light is slowed down to red, it forms physical things into existence. Obviously, um, your blood supply, your DNA, the physical body itself, which is based on the structure of sound. Anyone who has studied the science of sound, you will see that um, different keys or notes produces various geometrical patterns or what is called sacred geometry. For the man, it formed the six-star pattern or what's called the six-pointed star, arm, leg, leg, arm, head, penis. For the woman, it formed the five-pointed star configuration, arm, leg, leg, arm, head, uterus. Mm. All right? So man is symbolically a lahi which is spoken of within Arabic, and the woman is is actually a lahu. All right? Understand that the I is what? The letter itself, um, in lowercase, is the symbolic to the phallus, and the dot is symbolic to the sperm, in which that issues out of the phallus. The U is symbolic to the uterus, in which that the I goes into the uterus, hmm. symbolically the great works, because six plus five is the number 11, which means master builder. And it's through the sexual principle that you reach those levels. And not only that, through sex is the quickest way to spiritual enlightenment. Don't believe me? Go and do your research on Tantra. Go do your research on Tantra Kriya Yoga. 
And you will find out that for those who meditate for 20 years, you can gain the same access for those who study by themselves for 20 years. You can get it within less than two years by studying Tantra Kriya Yoga or being a practitioner of Tantra Kriya Yoga. So we have to understand what is really going on here. And at this expo, we'll be going into detail, detail about these sciences that I'm talking about. So it would be imperative that you come this weekend in order to learn. And this is for those who are serious. Mm -hmm. You know, this is for those who are serious. You know, um, this is no more play play. We have to actually become practitioners and just can't keep regurgitating a book that you read. Just can't keep regurgitating um, words that you heard someone else say. But you haven't practiced yourself. You know, you're talking about things because someone told you or you heard it. Right. No, you come and live it and be it. There's a difference. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe um, that's what Morpheus told Neo in the movie Matrix. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. He said there's a difference between uh, knowing the truth and walking the truth or, or, or walking the path. In other words, there's a difference between you knowing something or believing something and then actually practicing you know, actually practicing. So at this expo, we will be teaching various qigongs in which that helps increase immunity, your defense system, your lymphatic system, your lipnoids, as well as also helps with your digestive system, helps with the function of the heart, the liver, the spleen, the pancreas, helps with the brain function. All these things can be learned through the various Qigongs. And you will also be taught um, Tai Chi, which that helps with the strengthening of your auric field through various meditations and various breathing exercises, as well as what we call Ni Gong and Wei Gong. And you also learn how to heal yourself through various herbs, as well as also through the science of reflexology, acupressure, as well as also being a Reiki master practitioner or teacher. Your choice is yours, but you will learn how to heal yourself as well as also how to heal others. So you will gain mm -hmm. a tremendous amount of life force in which that it is said that it can actually add on two additional years or more to your life. And through regular practice, you can extend your life force and live years longer. As a matter of fact, if you master it to such a level, you can become an immortal, such as they say about Baba G. All right, and wish that was able to take the physical body with you and not die, as they say. Same thing was talked about within the Bible as Enoch. Same thing with Elijah. Then I have the fake death. Mm -hmm. So we talk about gaining the keys to immortality. That's what we talking about, gaining the keys to immortality. This is just the beginning stage. Your your quest is not over. The quest is a lifelong quest to gain knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, overstanding, understanding, or just plain standing. This is something in which that would take you to higher planes of existence, higher knowledge, in which that you will begin to bring your own system together and what works for you. You take the yang and the yin 
energies, the hard and the soft. You can take martial arts. You can take um, various forms of kung fu or karate and merge it with the soft forms of what we call um, tai chi. Right? We're talking about the mastery of life itself. That's what we're talking about. Right? So, for those interested, once again, hit us up at royalhouse777 at gmail.com. That's R-O-Y-A-L-H-O-U-S-E 777 at gmail.com. Or hit us up by way of phone. You can give us a call at 910-364-9099. That's 910-364-9099. 9099. All right. So we will be having a presentation. Um, Friday, we're going to be doing meet and greet. Um, we'll begin at 2 o'clock, you know, and um, allow everybody to get here, you know, and then, you know, around the time of 7, we'll begin. Um, I guess you can say we'll begin a presentation, a little light presentation for about two hours. Um, And afterwards, we'll have drumming. We'll have question and answers. Um, Then, you know, we let everybody rest, you know, do their thing. And we go, you know, we do light meditation and let everybody do their thing afterwards. Then Saturday, um, we'll start at 10 um, a.m., in which that we'll go um, for several hours, probably for like about two, three hours, and then we'll call for a break. And then after the break, after we eat, we'll come back, continue on with the presentation. Um, during these times, you're going to learn um, Reiki, praying and healing, and Qigong, all right, Tai Chi. And then you'll be able to that night, we're going to be going into more healing energy modalities. We'll be going into possibly um, a sweat lodge initiation. Indigenous. All right. And then Sunday, we do, um, we'll start at 10 again. Um, we go to 12 or 1 with another presentation and practical exercises and so forth and so on, meditation and breathing. And afterwards, we'll eat, and then we'll head to the beach and do our Qigong and Tai Chi um, there. All right, so that's a little layout plan or agenda for those who are interested in coming. All right, it's going to be a whole lot deeper than what I'm saying but mm-hmm. that is the logistics. That is the basics. So, um, you know, check us out. The Healing Wings Health and Wellness Retreat. Um, we're building it, trying to get it together. Um, still a lot more to go. But, um, you know, we're getting it together. You know, so just check us out. And, um, Brother L, you got anything that you want to speak on? Yes. Um, I was just... Um looking through your book, The First World Order, and some mm-hmm. of the things you are point, uh, uh, touching on tonight, I'm looking at uh, the word on 334, I'm looking at the word Venus. Venus in astrology is the planet of love. Venus is called in ancient Kama'at, Egypt, and the star of the ship of the Benu Asar. Osiris Oath means open, and Iris means eye or open eye, meaning the awakened right pineal gland, and Sirius, the constellation of our light body origin into the physical are considered the bright and morning stars. Nevertheless, we are over, we understand that Venus is not a star. However, it is still one of the brightest objects in the dawn, morning skies. Venus is referred to as the morning star because for a part of the year, Venus rises in the eastern sky. The women's Freemasonry is called the Eastern Star Order. 
symbolized by the planet Venus and Sirius. Uh, that's what I wanted to read. But I, I find that I still find it uh, fascinating, you know, how you broke that down uh, dealing with the Eastern stars, you know, because uh, I don't hear too much being broken down dealing with the Eastern star in the esoteric sense. You know, so, yeah, and another thing uh, you have here about the number seven, which is uh, 42, is the multiple of the seven. Uh, he was touching on and how the seven is the distance of uh, 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 the, uh, the planet, uh, uh, I believe it was Mercury, is distance from, um, where did that page go? Yeah, here it is. It says, uh, it says here, the number 42 is a multiple of seven. All gestation right. periods among mammals occur in cycles of seven. This is related to the moon. The number 42 also represents the proportional distance of the sun in the planet Saturn. Saturn is the last of the organic powers in sacred astronomy. Wow. Right, and that was symbolic to the fact of, like I just finished saying about Tahuti and his 42 um, books of law, or mm-hmm. what is called, you know, called the part of the... Um, Emerald tablets, mm-hmm. and the number forty-two is very significant because forty-two plus twenty-two is sixty-four. No coincidence that you have sixty-four permutations of DNA, mm-hmm. in which that twenty-two of the amino acids are coding, which means they're activated. The other forty-two are non-coded, which means inactivated. So that is the building block of life, which is actually protein, which is part of what we call the DNA. So when we find out, like I was saying, that only 10% of your DNA is truly activated and the other 90% is dormant and the Kundalini mm-hmm. helps with that activation, and then, like we said, the 10% brain usage of the average person, you know, the other 90% is, once again, is unusable. Then we realize that when scientists say that only the, from what they see of the universe, 10% of it is visible light. The other 90% or more is dark matter or black light or what they call um, black energy. Mm-hmm. All right. So that means with the activation of Kundalini, it gives you access to all of those things of the 90% of which that scientists can't explain as far as dark matter is concerned, your DNA is concerned, as well as also your brain usage is concerned. That's what we was talking about when you look at the movie Lucy, mm-hmm. in which that came out um, a couple of, right. uh, you know, about a couple months ago. You find out is that at the end she transformed into melanin, which is dark matter. You know, that black energy or black light. Mm-hmm. That's what she transformed into. All right? Um, and became part of everything. That is also Kundalini. Okay. There's an intimate con- um, connection or intimate connection between Kundalini and melanin. Melanin right. is the external soul. All right? It's the external soul. Melanin is what gives you the ability in order to feel in your environment or emotions, energy, emotion. It gives you the ability in order to absorb Various forms of energy and motion. Whether it's solar energy, yeah. Right. Solar energy, whether it's it, um, you know, cosmic energy, mm-hmm. whether it's magnetic energy, mm-hmm. whether it's X rays, whether it's gamma rays, whether it's UV mm-hmm. or ultraviolet rays, whether it's, you know, uh, infrared, radio waves, TV waves. Sound waves, all right? Melanin has the ability to absorb all of those levels of waves and transform them into particles because it said that when you look at a wave, it collapsed to become a particle. Well, there's no doubt about that because we know that 300,000 tons of stardust energy falls to the planet Earth daily from the cosmos. So that means as a melanated being, 
as we often say, you're supposed to absorb your share of energy. Mm-hmm. What it is is that people don't know how to absorb energy. All right? Nobody taught us how to breathe properly. All right? Most of us are shallow breathers, and we use our chest instead of still using our our um, abdomen. Okay? We need to be using our belly. Right. All right? Because it's in the belly or the lower dantian, which is the navel chakra, in which that expands about an inch to three inches down for the male to the sperm palace for the woman, um, the ovarian palace. That energy is stored there, all right, for longevity. So if you want long life, you would store the energy in your lower dantian. If you want love and compassion, then you would store the energy in your heart, specifically at the back of the heart to expand it to the front. If you wanted to gain a high IQ or intelligence, you would store the energy at the third eye or at the mouth of God, which is the medulla magata, which is at the back of the head, which is parallel to the third eye. So by the storage of, of energy into these particular dantians, what is called your lower dantian, your mid dantian, and your upper dantian. Within the Bible, the upper dantian is called the upper room. And you might read about that in the book of Acts, where Jesus went to go visit his disciples in the upper room, and he breathed on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Mm. See, this is what all of this is really talking about. The Christians say it all the time, dealing with the uh, right. uh, the higher and lower self, and the, prayer, the Lord's Prayer as it is, on earth as it is in heaven, you know. Exactly. And don't they realize what they're the saying. No, they don't. Right. Right, right. Don't and don't realize what they're saying. And that's and that's the key, you know, too, is that, you know, we have various different interpret interpretations. However, um when we tell when we combine medical and religion, that's you get metaphysics. That's when you get real metaphysics. All right, mm-hmm. metaphysics just don't mean beyond the physical. It means to explain the physical by observing nature, by observing the cosmos, but most of all by observing yourself, because know thyself and you would know the universe and God. Hmm. So that's what that's what metaphysics really mean. The word meta is from the word mayat, which means Truth, balance, reciprocity, law, order, peace, or love, or freedom. In which that, of course, we translate that within um, the more science temple, or the more holy temple of science, as being, what, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Mm-hmm. That's so, how deep it goes. Right, that's how deep it goes. So, meta is not just Greek, in which that means beyond, in which that has been translated as such, or Greco-Latin, or Roman, all right? Understand is that you had various Greeks to come into Egypt, or they was called Greeks. Actually, they was really Minoan or Cretan such as Aristotle. Aristotle was not a Greek in a way in which that you would think of what now is called European mm-hmm. or had pale skin. He couldn't have. Okay? Because he studied for 24 years in Egypt, which he did not conclude his studies because the study in Egypt actually was 40 years you had to study. All right? So he still had 16 more years to go before Mm -hmm. he finished his studies. But he did study about 24 years. So you got to understand is that when he took that information, you know, out back to you know, what is now called the Grecian lands and begin to teach 
the so-called Greeks, as we refer to them as, had any respect for philosophers, they would not have killed them. Mm-hmm. You know, they made um, Socrates drink poison. Okay. I believe it was arsenic. It made him drink poison <clears throat> because of his philosophical teachings. It was killing philosophers constantly. So, they, so the Greeks, those who we could refer to as the light skin or pale or white, they did not respect the philosophy of the darker skinned Minoans who was there first within the Grecian lands because the word right. Minoan means the followers of men. Men was the fertility deity, which is a form also of our men. All right? And so... We have to be able to put these connections together in order to understand what was going on. If you get the book, Historical Origin of Christianity, by Walter Williams, Professor Walter Williams, he states that the first European to become initiated into the ancient mystery school was Ptolemy or Ptolemy Sota. All right? The so called first. And he was one of the generals of Alexander the so-called Great. All right? This was supposedly around the or uh, after 332 BC, BCE, before the Christian era. All right? But Aristotle were the term was coined metaphysics came from, as they say, was in Egypt 384 hmm. BC or BCE. Meaning he couldn't have been a European if he was there 50 years before the first European. <laughs> now we come to find out when you look at a statue of Socrates, he's African. The same would have to be going for Aristotle and many of the so-called Greek philosophers. They weren't Greek. They was Minoan, who was, or the Cretans, who was there prior to the Greeks. All right? If you go to um, the Mediterranean um, Sea, you will find... And you went deep sea diving, you will find statues and all types of artifacts underneath the water, underneath the the waters there of the original people <laughs> who was in that land prior to the European or the pale man. All right, so. We have to understand history, what was really going on. you don't believe me, go and check out uh, Renoko Rashidi, his website or his teachings or information. You will find out that he speaks about the Cretans or the Minoans, who was the so-called original Greeks. You don't believe me? There's another book called The Missing Pages of History by Indo Kemet Kush. There's another book by Indo Kemet Kush called What They Never Told You in History Class. There's another book called Sex and Race by J.E. Rogers, Volume 1. All right? Get the book, Black Athena. Shit. <laughs> That's right. right. Black Athena, Volume 1 and 2 by Martin um, Barnell. Okay. I'm reading that right now. Huh? I'm currently reading those volumes right now, volume one. I almost through with volume one? one, The Black Athena. Oh, there you go, see? So understand real history, what's really going on here. There's a lot of things in which that they've been hiding, you know, and um, we have to 
as they say, they stole it and what we must return it. Right. All right. Brother L, you, you want to build on something there? Uh, yeah, they stole it. We must return it. And that's right to uh, what we've been doing, really, uh, by dealing with our uh, <clears throat> a lot of our comedic sciences dealing with even in the the Christian religion, uh, a, a lot of our sciences lies in there also. Uh, right. Buddhi- Buddhism, uh, right. Islam. That's why we don't. That's, that's why we don't disregard any religion, you know. But that, it's like don't throw the water out. Don't throw the baby out with the bath water. Exactly. No you type know. of thing. Yeah. And that's the meaning of the call when you first joined the Moorish t- Science Temple of the World Incorporated. That that uh, the uh, 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 the card, the nationality card they give you uh, in that temple, it, it has a lot of meaning to it. Uh, when it uh, we we give re- reference and honor to all the prophets, you know, Muhammad, Confucius, right. uh, Buddha, right. Jesus, you know, and right. so on, you know, because that's that's all. And then in the Holy Quran, even tell you about right, right. It tells you even about the Brahmins. You know what I'm saying? Who worship Vishnu and Krishna, you know, being the um, ninth incarnation of um, Vishnu, you know, as well as also, um, you know, Saraswati and whomever else. It speaks about it, you know, um, as far as the Brahmins, you know, within the um, Holy Quran Circle 7. Mm-hmm. You know, Bhagavad which is Hindu. Gita, uh, you name right, it, the Bhagavad you know? Gita. Right, exactly. The Marababa, you know, mm-hmm. uh, the Hispanishites. You know, all then, of that is from the, um, the vestas, Brahmin, you know. <laughs> right, right. I mean, right. The, the Vedic text, exactly. You know? So, I mean, I think we're going to end up getting some of this information, these concepts soon. And um, I spoke with her sister today, and um, she said she didn't know, she didn't know nothing about what I was talking about, but she felt in her soul that what I was saying was true. <laughs> So as she began to study more and more and more, you know, she caught on and said, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, I, you know, she on it now, okay? So Mm -hmm. this is the key, you know, is that, no, you might not know everything what we're talking about, you know, but have an open mind. Be skeptical, you know what I'm saying? But at the, but put what we're saying in the back of your head and then go and do your research and study on it. That's the key. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to tell you, like, my teacher told me, don't believe me, go and check it out. You know what I'm saying? So, that's the key. We're going to go to the phone line right quick. We got area code 803, area code 803 on the line. Peace. Hey, peace. Yes, my brother. How y'all brothers doing? Well, brother. Doing well, well doing well. Yeah. That's great, my brother. It's Kareem, baby, man. How you doing, GF? Doing well? Hey, y'all. Um, what I was really calling about was, um, Actually, I'm starting to take myself to the metaphysical level. I mean, I just recently, about three weeks to a month, I cut away all the meats, you know what I mean, and basically, you know, get a cleansing within the purification interior. Um, I've been noticing stomach area. You know, I've been having a slight little, not really pain, pain, but, you know, it feels like the indigestion may be or something coming up. You know, do you have anything that uh, you think may relate to something oh, yeah. of that sort? Uh, yeah, what, what? right. Um, what, what you need, brother, is fenugreek, F-E-N-U-G-R-E-K. Right now. Okay, my brother, can you get that back to me one more time, my brother? Right. The herb that you need is fenugreek, F-E-N-U-G-R-E-E-K, fenugreek. And what it does is um, any problem with the digestive system, it helps to cure or it helps to heal the area, whether it's um, flagellation, which is farting, whether it's um, uh, ref- uh, reflux disease or disorder, whether it's um, pains within the gastric or intestinal area, mm-hmm. uh, fenugreek helps to heal um, that area. So take fenugreek. Okay. You can also go to our okay. website. We have it. And you can order it from us or either from someone else. 
Okay. Uh, so what, um, that's from um, Dr. Um, Lean Mel B, my brother, or that's from um, First Royal Order? Nah, this is Brother L. Bay here with uh, Aline. No, I know, I know, I know, I know, understand that, my brother. I know what I was saying. Was, oh. What website will I be able to get that off the Dr. Ali? Oh, yeah, Dr. Dr. Ali Melbay.com. Yep, Dr. Oh, Ali Melbay.com. Yeah. Right, sorry about that. Do, mm-hmm. do part me too, my brother. It's just, it's me, my brother. I don't know. Body going through a light little chain, my brother. So, my, uh, something dealing with my head or whatnot. But, but, but we peace, my brother. Do part me. Um, I hate having like, we're, we're trying to get the balance, my brother. That's what it is. Um, All right. One more right. other thing, my, one more thing, uh, other, my brother. Um, I hear, I know you said that y'all had the, um, the event that's coming up. I know I'm not going to be able to right. clean that event, per se. Right. That's the thing I got going myself. Um, okay. But I was wondering, is there any way that, you know, we may be, uh, how would I still be able to get with you or uh, still strive to get that done? Because I'm striving to take myself to that metaphysical level where I can actually strive to master those things. I mean, I'm conscious, but I right. Know. right. Well, we have consultations um, set up as well as also you can um, – Check it out with um, healing classes that we have online every Saturday. I mean, excuse me, every Sunday and Tuesday. Um, you know, so you can do that, you know, and uh, you, you'll find everything right there on our website. So when you go to DrAlimelBay.com, you'll be able to um, find, you know, everything that we do, the products that we have and all of that right there. Brother L, you here? Yes, you're here. Yeah, I think the brother call dropped. Oh, okay. All right, so for those who want to um, call in, the area code is 626. The number is 414-3535. That's 626-414-3535. Give us a call in if you got any questions about anything that we're talking about here tonight. That's 626-414-3535. Check us out. All right? Yeah. Hi, right, brother L. Still got still, uh, still looking at number seven here. It said therefore each every one of us has the seven major prophets, seven seals, right. the chakras to nine, and eventually twelve uh, and one. Twelve plus one is thirteen. By twenty twelve, well, at least many of us, thus they are one and the same. None of these prophets exist under the guise as you have been taught. Muhammad means in Arabic one who is worthy to be praised. However, in its original Medunetra language, Mu means water, Ham means black, and Ma'at is Ma'at, which means truth, justice, or righteousness. Therefore, the words, the word, truer meaning is the black water of justice. This is the blatant reference to the the Melanin or Melamin. In Greek, Mel means black. And medu netter means hidden one. So that that is that is uh, really uh, uh, I say superb how you really uh, breaking things down in this book. And I really uh, 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 stress this that uh, a lot of more need to get this book because it's a self help it's a self help book as well as uh, studying your inner self. Where you, uh, like you said earlier. To understand yourself and know yourself, where you know the world and God. So, right, because there's too much energy being um, expended upon, you know, external things. You know, like I said earlier, we waiting for something other than ourselves to save us. When even Obama told us that, you know, the the waiting hand, you know, the um, hand that you've been waiting on the whole time is actually at the end of your own arm. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's the key. We have to understand that. You know. Um, hold on, we got another call here, area code six four six. Area code six four six, you're on the line. Your, oh, yes, your. Sir. Uh, yes, sir, yes, sir. I'd like to say peace, peace to uh the, Dr. Aleem and peace to uh brother Fahim Al. Um peace. I got three right. questions. Yes. Yeah, I got three questions. I'm gonna just say my questions and then I'm gonna get off the line because I know you got all the callers. In your book, um, on page thirty five, number twenty seven, it says, Who is Ben Bay? Emmanuel Muali, Benjamin Banneker, and then it says ben, Benjamin Franklin. Does that mean Benjamin Banneker and Benjamin Franklin is the same person? Yes. And then what happens that 
Well, not necessarily the same person because actually it was a pseudo name. All right. Okay. Um, for example, Benjamin Franklin actually was Richard um, Sa- um, Sanders. All right. Okay. Um, so he used that name, Benjamin Franklin. But if you notice, all of the inventions of so called Benjamin Franklin is actually what Benjamin Banneker invented the watch okay. or the clock, as we would say. Okay. Um, you know, those things was invented by Benjamin Banneker. But all of a sudden okay. in history, it was given to Benjamin Franklin, who actually was Richard Sanders. So what happened okay. is that, or Saunders, excuse me. So what happened is that if you get the videotape by Queen Valahara, right, Queen Valahara, um, things called The Rise of the Moors, in that DVD, she speaks on the fact that Benjamin Franklin was really Benjamin Banneker. Okay. Okay. And she goes into oh, the information. Oh, uh, also, right. uh, I don't want to take too much time. Um, I've I've been a vegetarian since birth. I've been doing martial oh, arts right. since seven, and then I also right. was doing the Tibetan rites plus the mm-hmm. uh, uh, the, the twenty one breaths with uh, uh, Mel Chesedek. Wow. But I'm mm-hmm. noticing mm-hmm. that um mm-hmm. that I be feeling it feel like a it's like a pull coming down on the top of my forehead, like in the middle of my forehead. Right. I feel like a, like right. a pole, like like a metal pole, just mm-hmm. right in the circle right. in the mean. middle. I, mm-hmm. I don't know what that I don't know what that is. That's the opening is, of your third that, eye. Huh? Oh, okay, okay. That's so I'm on the right track. Okay, I'm oh, on yeah, the right that's track. Oh yeah, third eye. <laughs> And you go and, and the last question, the pineal gland is is magnetized at that level at the six at the sixth sense or at the um sixth chakra. It's okay. magnetized, so you're dealing with magnetic consciousness. So you're pulling whatever you want to you. So that's okay. the reason why you feel in the pulling sensation. If you learn to visualize what you want, and then have that pulling sensation, then you can manifest what you want here on this plane of existence. Oh, okay, sir. Okay, and my last question. I'm sorry to take up the time. Is uh, I know no Brother wrong. Fahim L. Mm-hmm. Um, did his um, nationality um, re- kind of a little more recently than you, and like I just want to know like what's the total? How much? How much you gonna end up spending after you do all of this? About ballpark, you know what I mean? I know it's three sixty on the website, but I mean after you do all the file of paperwork or whatever, how much? How much you gonna end up spending? It depends if you go to the Register of Deeds or if you go to the Civil Filing Clerk of Superior Court. Oh. The Civil Filing Clerk of Superior Court, you will ask for a registry number, and their prices are cheaper than the Register of Deeds office. Okay. 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 So everybody, every county is different, if right. you understand what I'm saying. But every courthouse okay. is different as it comes to the filing because if you record your information, then it's at the register of deeds. If you register your information, it's at the clerk of civil filing section of Superior Court. Both are good because it still puts both on the public record. The register of deeds, however, um, any police or officer or whomever can actually, or sheriff or state trooper can actually pull up your documentation from their computer system. So that's the best one. Right, but it's a little bit more expensive than the clerk of filing um, or the civil filing um, of the um, section of the clerk of superior court. Okay, okay. So I I guess I got to go with the best one then. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, sir. um, Once again, Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, sir. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, no, I'm listening. Go ahead. Yeah, so I was just saying, so... um, Based on that, you can actually call down there um, prior to and find out what the cost is. Like, for example, the first page is normally $3 and then $0.25 after Mm -hmm. after that, um, something like that. Um, That's at the the, um, civil filing section of the clerk of the Superior Court. It's a little bit more at the um, Register of Deeds, $3 the first page and then maybe a dollar the traditional page. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Like ballpark, right? I, I drop the six three sixty, then right. I, I do whatever. Ballpark, what are we talking about? Five hundred a G? 
No, 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 no. You talking about no. Um, you talking about additional fifteen dollars if you go to the clerk of superior court between fifteen to twenty dollars, and then you talking about fifty dollars to probably seventy dollars at the um, register of deeds. Oh, I could swing that. That's no problem. Okay, brother. Again, I don't want to take up your time. I love the work that you was doing, brother. I thought something happened to you because I heard brother Fahim was on for like two weeks. I was like, yo, where's the brother? <laughs> I'm like, yo, I hope the brother's all right. This, this, and that. But I, I ain't going to take no more time. Peace and love to you and the Peace goddess. And, love, um, and yo, Appreciate y'all guys you. are doing some positive work, man. Positive, Thank man. Thank you. Keep Thank on you. track, brother. I'm following. All right. Most all right. I appreciate, appreciate it. You, you. Peace. All right. All right, that's for those who want to get the call in, 626-414-3535. Once again, 626-414-3535. Give us a call in, you know, get your questions answered. You know, come on in, check us out. Say what you got to say. We need to hear from you. 626-414-3535. You know? All right. Um, right. I'm going to wait till um, someone gives a Yeah, you got something to say, Brother Fahim? Yeah, I like, the, I like the, how you brought down the Catholic, the Catholic Church. Oh, right. She even tells you that Mary is a Lady Fatima, which you spoke right. on earlier in your lecture exactly. the, the night. But I thought Fatima was the daughter of Muhammad. Mm-hmm. So how can this be? Simple. The P6 of Mari is Ma, just like the suffix if Fatima is Ma, which are both short forms of the netter, a netter form which derives from the word nigger. Niger, masculine, Nigeria, feminine, Naga, and, and etc. are principal Ma'at. Fati means in Arabic to open, opening or opener. That Fati faith is ancient Tamarian word which was derived from Pita. Puta equals Buddha, meaning enlightened one, which means the opener or the creator of all the gods. Neteru, parentheses. Pita is depicted as a mummified man, man wearing a skull cap like a Kufi on a Muslim or a Yakima uh, on, a, on a Hebrew and bearing the symbols of life, power, and stability, Therese's aunt was Daji, in his unfettered arms, standing on the plinth, which is part of Ma'at Medunetter hieroglyphic name, and was used as a straight, straightage or stonemasons and architects. That's beautiful. It's very beautiful, God. Yeah. Thanks, I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, I mean, that's the whole thing. Trying to explain, you know, because I know I had questions as a child coming up. And so, mm-hmm. you know, by studying, you know, Dr. York or studying Dr. Ben, John Henry Clark, Dr. John Henry Clark, um, Dr. Khaled Muhammad, mm-hmm. um, studying um, with Baba um, Steve Coakley, you know, and studying, you know, Renoka Rashidi's work. Um, Wayne Chandler's work, um, Muata Ashby's work, Raul Nefa Amen, Shekum or Shekum, um, mm-hmm. as he's called. All these people, you know, had an influence as I was coming up, you know, on my life. You know, studying Elijah Muhammad, Malcolm X, Minister Farrakhan, the Nation of Gods and Earth, or known as the Five Percentage. All this had a major influence. So, it's just the fact of me having questions and said, okay, well, let me find the answer for myself, and maybe this might help others who might have had the same question. Mm-hmm. You know, so um, you know, I was thinking from that's why I, that's why I wrote that book. I was thinking from the from the perspective of someone who would question. You know. Mm-hmm. Um. All right. So we're gonna go back to the line right quick. Three, okay. four, seven. Here we go. Three, four, seven. New York, New York. You're on the line. Hey, what's up, my brothers? Peace. Peace. I'm just doing priceless work right now, and um, well appreciated from from this point. I got one quick question. Um, in regards to um, your first Kundalini experience, if you could explain that in detail. 
because I'm, you know, <laughs> <I'm, laughs> okay. explaining in detail yep. and, you know, to the best of your ability, was, to where, where, what were you able to see, hear, or have right. involvement with during the experience, you know? All right. I, I was nine years old, brother. And um, mm. I remember, um, I, and at the time, between 9 to 11, I read the whole Bible um, over that two years. I read wow. the whole Bible. And I remember um, at 9, I was just crying um, for God to give me the knowledge and wisdom and understanding of King Solomon. Hmm. All right? Hmm. By, by 9, not only did I gain access to some key of, as they say, of King, the le- whether it's the lesser key or greater key, key of King Solomon, I was receiving it, you know, um, at nine, I seen my first UFO. Hmm. All right. It hovered over my head only about 150 yards over top of my head. And I was wow. in Coney Island. I was in Brooklyn, oh. New York. And as I was walking back from the store um, to the, um, to um, the high rise apartments, you know, um, this UFO came straight over my head, and the lights on the craft went in and out like the chakra system. The colors of the chakras. It was Roy G. Big. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. You know, so as I grew older, understood what that was symbolic to. That actually was nothing more than a projection of me. My Kundalini rose at nine and gave me access to what I truly am, my soul aspect, which is actually um, was that mothership in which did I sing. You know, in other words, that was me in a in 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 a in a sense, and those colors symbolize the opening of those seven chakras. You know, and being that it was a um, those lights was going around it just like a wheel, it was symbolic to, you know, as you will read within the Bible, you know, when you read Zechariah Ascension teachings or when you read um, um, Danifin, um, Danif, um, uh, what's his name? I think it's um, Danik, Danikvin um, teachings or um, David Childress information about UFOs. Um, they speak about the fact that, you know, are they intergalactic or are they you know, extraterrestrial in the sense of something external of yourself. And people are now beginning to understand that um, some of these crafts on which that is being seen, you know, actually projections from within, you know what I'm saying, Um, Mm -hmm. or intergalactic in their travel. In other words, there's 50 portals um, in the brain, you know, and these portals give way to um, access um, also for these particular ships. This is the reason why you can actually transform your body into a ship. Um, as the last brother who was calling, he said he was studying um, um, Vavalo Melchizedek, in which that the 24th, the 20, um, the 18th, the 24th, and the 20 and 28th breath technique, you can actually transform your physical body into a macabre or a ship. Um, if you get the book Zulu Bone Oracle, um, Kuda Mutwa, states in there, he's been interviewed and he states in there that the women of South Africa are still called to this day Macau because before they came to planet Earth, the South Africans, who was called the Amazulu people, which means the sky people existed on Mars, which is the red planet prior to coming to Earth mm. now, when you go and do your research on Mars and the um, Sidonia site, you will find pyramids the face of Mars um Structures, different um, artificial man-made structures there, you know, on Mars. And so he stated that through a cosmic catastrophe, planetary catastrophe, um, you know, the men impregnated the women and the women transformed themselves into ships and they came here to Earth. You know, so... These are all things in which that is said within our own culture, you know, African culture, in which that many people don't speak about, you know. But if you go and study Creed Moutois, he talks about this extensively, you know. So, you know, that was my first Kundalini experience was actually 
um, asking for the knowledge and wisdom of Solomon and then having that experience of, you know, just, you know, a few, um, you know, days later of the UFO right after that. Hmm. That's excellent, man. Appreciate that. Um, with the breathing techniques, man, um, all we have to focus on is breathing for that amount of time. Just keep focusing on the, the count. Or, I mean, what do we focus It's hard to count yeah, focus. I'm trying to get the count, everything regular. Yeah, the count, is, the, count is, the count is just for a beginning. Um, mm-hmm. Once you get into it, you won't need to count any longer. So you would drop the count. Mm-hmm. And, um, and essentially to the point where you can actually drop the breath and you just exist, just be. So the thing is, it's just, you know, it's just a tool in order to get you to, you know, the, you know, as it says, um, the ends to the means, you know, get you to to the level that you want to be at. These are just tools. So the breath, utilizing the breath is to get you to um, complete enlightenment or absolute um, um, knowledge, I guess you can say. All right, bro. I appreciate you, man. Thanks a lot, man. Thank right. you. Thanks yeah. for everything, bro. You and, you and the brother yeah. doing it, man. All right. Appreciate you, God. Number one. Appreciate y'all, too, man. All right. All right, I appreciate you. Peace. Nope. All right. Once again, area code 626-414-3535. It's amazing we ain't hearing from the sisters tonight, Brother L. No, not for one sister. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Still early yet though. I mean, you know, still got a little well, time. Yeah, we, we, we still got about tw- wait, uh, about twenty five minutes more minutes. They might, they yep. might, they might show through. Then okay, I, I like... got everything. Yeah, we got another okay. number eight five zero eight five zero. You on the line? Peace. Hi. Yeah, brother, this is um yeah, hey, hey, uh my ID. I just oh, okay. got my um he's just oh, what, working on getting my affidavit from you. Oh. Mhm. I just hey. got the name, I just looked on my email. She's I'm excited about getting it in. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But I what was listening in on um yeah. The um last Wednesday's conversation and um yeah, it's quite on point with um exactly what all you've been saying. And I've read this phenomenal book. Um, it was given to me when I was looking at one of um Bobby Hemmings' videos, and he was talking about the serpent grill, and they got into the knowledge of the original shiny ones, and it was getting to right. yeah, getting into how that those people are us. And I was just yeah, so women. It even well, shocked me to find out that the condition that I was diagnosed with, what the doctors say I was diagnosed with since the age of 17, which just came on, was epilepsy. And it was talking about how that was like going into a trans state with, um, with like, under the underworld, well, seeing, well, going into another realm and then um, coming back into, you know, this realm that we're in. So that just amazed me. And I, I'm just enjoying what you're saying and, you know, the lessons and learning. Right. That's that's the realm of the mentor. As they would say, uh, which is the um, the dark, the dark realm, a mentor, which means the hidden realm. All right. So, what helps with what we call epilepsy, which is supposedly a misfiring off in the brain um, between the dendrites and the synapses, um, vitamin B six and B twelve, um, a high amount, so that you can handle the energy in which that is coming in. Um, okay. You know, through the top of the head, through the crown. That's really what oh. it is. Mm-hmm. You have a lot of energy coming in through the crown um, of your head, and so what happened is that um, there's a lot of energy in which that the physical body might not learn how to handle as of yet. So you have to increase the vitamin intake of vitamin of B12 and B6, or what is called B complex. In order to, as a matter of fact, what is on the back of the bottle, which, you know, might say take two daily. You know, you want to take at least three times the dosage or more. All right. Yeah. In which that helps. With, mm-hmm, in which that helps with that so that you can 
you know, be a vessel for that channeling of that information. So that's really what it is. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I was supposed to make it to that event, but, yeah, it was real close. Well, a lot, well, it was oh, too close to, well, later I had, well, I was, I'm working, so I wanted to be able to make it, but it was just, you know, I don't think it was enough time for me to be able to get there and especially, but it wasn't just that. It was, you know, if I had someone, you know, at least staying there, you know, in that area for some of the events, the events that you had, what, the 19th, the 20th, and 21st, I would have came where I was hoping I could get someone to take me since I'm not able to drive you know, or anything myself. I would have loved to went to that event. I would have, yes. Man. Maybe another time. Yeah, hopefully, because we're going to have them about three to four times out the year, so you definitely will be invited. So, you know, just keep okay. us in mind, and, you know, where are you located at? In Florida, northwest Florida. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, I got you. Yeah, because the event would have been right up my alley because I, well, I'm a massage therapist and it would work, you know, wonder, you know, and I, you know, I love to learn more. Oh, of course, you never went to the knowledge more. I steady keep reading and everything and try to get better. More. But, <laughs> and that it just would have been, you know, a lovely experience, you know, experience for me to be there. Right. Well, like I said, you're definitely invited to the next ones. You know, hopefully, um, I don't know, check out the Mega Bus, you know, and see what their rates are like that. And we can pick you up from the bus station if you wanted to do it like that. So, you know, however you, um, you know, can travel, you know, you ain't got to worry about that if you're on the Mega Bus. Oh, yeah, I looked that up, but, well, the thing about it is the closest location that they could have uh, gotten me was Myrtle Beach in South Carolina. I think it was because well, Charlotte well, was too far away. Yeah, but Myrtle Beach is only an hour um, away from us. So and you was like, able to get what? dropped off. Of, if you was able to get dropped off of Myrtle Beach, that would have been good, too. We still could have came and got you. Yeah. It's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I got you. Was just you know, it's just so I don't know. Well, it was the last minute call, and I was with my parents, and they were kind of worried that I don't really know anybody up there, and it was my first time going well that far away, well by myself. So I would have liked it to come. Okay. Oh, I wanted definitely to come. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I got you. I understand. All right. Well, like I said, it's open. You know, we got four more coming up this next year. So keep us in mind. Okay. Oh, yeah. I definitely will. Okay. Well, appreciate it. Right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Peace. Peace. All right. We got area code 732. Area code 732. You're on the line. Peace. Good evening, brothers. How are you tonight? I'm fine, brother. How you doing, brother? Peace. All right. Um, gotta say, I'm very excited to talk to you two brothers, man. Uh, brother Eileen, brother Fahim, I am um, very avid listener. Um, been following a lot of your teachings on YouTube for what I can, and right. um, what I um, you know, I'm I'm tuning in tonight kind of late. I was involved with some things of what I'm doing in my inner work, but. I tuned in late. I try and keep very disciplined and listening. I come from a background of very uh, esoteric information, but um, it's inf- it, it, it's very informative to me what you brothers bring to the table, and that it is uh, something I've never I've never considered before with this application to self, and that was very enlightening. So I've been following you guys and uh, brother Panic and uh, brother uh, brother Hemet, brother Valentine very closely. And um, what I'm going to ask tonight really is a two-part question. I know you um, deal pertainly to healing, brother Eileen, and um, right. a lot of what a lot of what you speak is. Uh, I haven't 
had a chance to read your book in any way, but I know that I'm um, in the future I'm going to uh, purchase this. This is my effort right now. But what I generally want to ask has to do with both the spiritual aspect and then it's back to reality in this realm we live as flesh. So I'm going to go with the first one here. When I was a child, I was listening to a lot of the family earlier speaking about their kundalini experiences and now at the same thought that I hear that, I just now, you know, I'm, I'm just now privy to maybe that's what that was. But pertaining to the question, when I was very small, um, I was at a daycare, and uh, I just remember playing. I, I was consumed with G.I. Joe and Thundercats. All right, so I used to, <laughs> I used to, I used to play with my my man, and his name, uh, I'm going to keep it out of the airwaves, but his name is a rock star's name. But it was his real name. But this dude, he was real funny, man. He would always watch the show the same way I would watch it. So, you know, as a child, you remember that. So I would play with this dude outside, you know, on the playground. I'm playing with this dude. And I remember I'm gripping the wheel on top of the playground. And I turned around and I got off of the playground. And I I remember looking at the dirt. And I'm, I'm grabbing the dirt from my hand. And I'm talking to him. And then I was just in the corner of the property at the edge of the whole entire school, by myself, no one's outside with me. And when I turn around, he and my teacher are coming through the door like, man, we've been looking for you this whole class. Where have you been? Mm -hmm. Now, with my background, you know, I'm going to just be blunt. I I, I used to be a Jehovah's Witness. I was born and raised in that. and I. And I've been, I've, you know, you brothers have really enlightened to a lot of the things that the main populace listening now do not really appreciate what it is that you bring to the table. They really don't, because I know that there are probably some listeners out there that are affiliated with some kind of topographical information, but have always had this question burning in their mind. And I'm telling you, you know, if you're listening, that the answer is not to throw the baby out with the bath water, you know, as as the, the teachers have said before, you have to really look inside, and that's really what brings me here. So, you know, I wasn't able to convey that information to my family who brought me up into that and were able to tell me what that was. That's one thing, um, you know, with my questions. Uh, the other aspect of it is in my inner work to, uh, to to this day, I've been going through my chakras. I'm on my second chakra. So what I'm trying to do now is um, in the physical, I got a juicer with my wife. She's really into nutrition. So we got a little juicer, and I'm uh, taking vegetables, and I'm trying to couple that with meditation. So I'm wondering if there's anything I could glean from you on that as well. And yeah. that, that, that's it. Um, that's it. I'm, I'm not going to bite your time. <laughs> no, no, no. That's good, Doc. Um, well, like you said, you know, uh, let me get to the first statement slash question in a sense was, um, yeah, you could have been taken up, you know, as far as the loss of time, as they say. Um, I lost time when I was nine, when I seen the UFO, because it was daytime when I left, and then it was nighttime when I came back. All wow, right? okay. So, right, so um, I lost time. So, you could have possibly been taken up, you know, based on that too. So that just simply means that you're very advanced, you know, um, you know, in your research and your studies, and also in the physical, you know, to be able to do that and have that experience at such a young age, you know, and that's the and that's one of the things, you know. I, I remember when I was on uh, four, you know, and it was my first day going to. You know, um, I guess you say uh, preschool. You know, I didn't want to leave my mom. I was was scared. I cried, you know. Mm -hmm. But as Mm -hmm. I was crying, I began to start feeling the racism and the sexism, you know, of the world on me. Mm -hmm. I I began Mm -hmm. feeling, you know, that negative energy, you know, which that is said to be, you know, within the etheric field around the planet Earth. You know, I, I was feeling all of that, and so it was real strange to me. And I remember at four, of course, I couldn't explain it, but I felt it. And I remember that feeling to this day, and I can explain what it was, you know. So, 
you know, the thing is, is that, you know, at a young age, you are able to explain, you know, um, certain things at that level. Like, for example, at five, I, I was able to tune into different dimensions and see my first ghost, as they would say. But it's not the type of astral energy in which that you know, ghost is as they show us on TV. This being um, actually looked like the outline of like when the TV used to go off back in the days with the little black and white dots, you know. Okay, yes, um, like yeah. I was yeah. Actually, like I was actually tuning into another station or something. And I was able to do that at five. And so, you know, it was a lot of things in which that was going on. But it was is that our chakras were open. They was open, Mm -hmm. you know, in which that the average person chakras, you know, as children, you know, weren't open. So they might not have those same experiences. But because our chakras were open, you know, we were seeing things, you know, which that we might not have been yet ready for or experiencing things that we might not yet been ready for, but they still happen. You know, because of our um, activated chakra system. So the thing is, is that you're working on your chakras. Um, what energy is emitted from the chakras becomes your auric field. So the thing is, is to tune the auric field, and you can do what is called the pranic breaths, in which that you can breathe in for seven seconds, hold it for one second, breathe out for seven seconds, and hold it for one second. And what that does is strengthens your auric field. And actually, after the 100 breath, it expands your auric field 15 feet around you as compared to the average person whose auric field is only three feet outside of themselves. Hmm. So you have five times greater auric field. And not just that, through the practice, it seals up any leaks and holes in which that could have been caused by any um, negative bioplasmic energy or any negative thought form. Now, wait, let me stop you there. <clears throat> let me stop you there. Does that mean, because um, I'm very active with this, does that mean, because, okay, um, to be clear, certain, you know, you're aware, well, I know you know scanning. You brothers know scanning yes. when you can self-scan. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, right. is that is that right. similar That's to what you're speaking? Easy. Okay. Yes, that's pranic energy, right? You can do the same thing, right? That's scanning, right? So you can scan, okay. but you can also sweep, which means you can remove negative bioplasmic energy from your body, but then you can also energize or re-energize your bodily system, all right? But the key is you can do it by way of the breath in which that helps to expand your auric field, all right? Your aura is what is called your... um your bioplasmic body, or what is called your um, your um, etheric body, all right? Or as your etheric body expands, it becomes what is called your astral body, which is your emotional body. That's why your aura changes colors, is because it tells me of your emotional state at any given time. Once you have mastered your emotional body, then the primary color is the color in which that um, you have tuned into whether it's green, whether it's blue, whether it's um, indigo or violet or white or gold. You know, um, a spiritual man, um, a highly spiritual man or woman um, receives a sun disc around the top of their head, which is white as gold. Uh, white as gold. So once you reach that higher level, that's what will happen. But in order to expand your aura right now, Practice that breath, um, seven one seven one. Seven one seven one. I'm writing everything down. That's why I'm so quiet. Seven one seven one. Okay. Uh, just a quick question. I don't want to take up any time because you brought it up when you spoke of um, uh, my experience as a child. That you said that there might be of things that we're not ready for because of the chakra opening. Right. Okay. Um. With that, like, for example, mind. when I was able to, right, the reason why I said it because as I was able at five to tune into another dimension and see what I perceived to be a ghost um, mm-hmm, or right. someone on the other side, as they say, someone who what, 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 what would normally scare people. Right, right. And at right. five, I just looked, you know, as he was walking across what I perceived to you know, walk across the floor, 
you know, I was in my bedroom, but the kitchen in the living room was adjacent to my bedroom, and he came from out the kitchen area walking across, you know, the um, the living room, and I remember saying in my mind, if he looks at me, oh, you know, it's on, I'm screaming, (laughs) right, you know, and so I'm looking at him, and then I realized that he can also see me. You know what I'm saying? And it was in the shape of a man's body. That's the reason why I'm saying he, but it was not a man. It was not a man as we know it to be of flesh and blood. It was a man in the sense of the shadow of a man. And it wasn't a, a dark shadow. Like I said, it was like a TV, like like back in the days when the TVs went off or when they had antennas and shit. You know, right. it, it it was like that it was like that impression of the body. So 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 do you think do you think that me, I'm sorry do you, I, I mean like I'm really do you think that um cuz I held back these things for a while from calling y'all I know you deal with the bullshit a lot from brothers and sisters family be trying to be a little scared of all the things right. that really dwell within themselves you know so mm-hmm. I really try to I'm I'm dealing with a lot of turmoil I've had um I've had right. uh, my 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 three children. My wife and I are married now three years, but ever since we've actually gotten married, all of our children have have passed before we were able to conceive. And so I'm really trying to understand what it is I'm doing with all of this amidst all of this turmoil that just constantly comes up in my life. So when you said just now about how um, it might have been things we're not ready for that maybe in the future because of what we might come across, maybe is that emotional energy that we never dealt with in another right. life or maybe in right. another stance of the life we have right now, perhaps right. something Either like, um, right. okay, because okay. All because you, right, now, because all you, right, let me explain. All your past lives are stored in what is called the oversoul. Um, the oversoul looks like a cloud or a gigantic bubble in the sense in which that all your past lives are stored there, all your previous incarnations. So what happened is that we know that the soul, when it incarnates, comes back with the same um, problems that it left with. If you did not get prayed for, um, you know, by your relatives here on this side who were still living after you passed on the transition um, for you to be better so you can come back into a better state. And if you did not learn even the lessons there on the astral plane and then had to return and incarnate into a fleshly body. Now, see, that's what, what? I need. That's what I need. I need that. Mm-hmm. I, I've been looking for, I've been looking for something in the information that uh, the brothers and sisters provide, and I don't know if I may be missing something that I haven't found that, but that's the kind of, you know, that's the precipice of which I'm on already. And that's what I'm trying right. to get to, you know, so right. I don't, can you point me in the direction maybe of that? Or I don't know. Yeah. Um, you can get my book in which that, what brother L was reading from. I speak about the Medulla Magada where your past lives are stored at, as well as also mm-hmm. photographic memory. I speak about that information right there within the book on um, the first world order. Um, as well as also another good book um, is what is called Reincarnation. Um, is by, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, uh, he was the founder of the Anthroposophical Society, Rudolph. I can't remember. Rudolph? Who. Rudolph Stein. Right, his name is Rudolph. Rudolf Steiner, thank you, brother. Rudolf Steiner, okay. I heard Brother Henry mention him before. Right, Rudolf Steiner, um, he did a book called Reincarnation, and he's the founder of the Anthroposophical Society. He was a member of the Theosophical Society up on the Mount of Babaski, but, of course, the Anthroposophical and the Theosophical is nothing more than Rotocrucian orders. So the Rotocrucians teach that information also. Um, So you can get um, that book. Okay. Reincarnation okay. by Okay, well I I'm I'm not gonna hold up any more of y'all time, man. I know time getting limited, but I appreciate the time you take 
to uh, let this information out, Brother Aleem, Brother Fahim. Uh, you know, with the health and the healing, the Reiki, all of that, man, I'm doing my thing. Keep it banging, keep it funky. All right? All right, all right. Take it easy, man. All right, peace. All right, peace. 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 All right, we got area code 410. Area code 410, you're on the line. Peace, Dr. Aleem. Peace, peace. Peace. Peace, brother Fahim. Peace. Um, I uh, I uh, got on to your show a little later this evening, but um, I uh, sent you a message on Facebook about the reclamation process, and right. I was on the website um, earlier this evening, and I wanted to ask um, the things that are listed as far as the affidavits are they a part of the the process? Um, for the nationality, the affidavit from which that you will receive is the affidavit of nationality, your your national declaration, your um, affidavit of um, revoking power of attorney, your affidavit of non-taxpayer status, your affidavit of um, common law name correction or religious name correction, your... Mm-hmm. Affidavit of truth, your affidavit of facts, as well as also your affidavit of um, denial of corporate status, as well as also okay. um, your your live plain birth form, which is called your baptismal mm-hmm. record, and also your nationality card. Okay. All right. So that's everything yeah. that you can receive. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so. Uh, is that that's that's per person? Because I plan on doing this for my my whole thing, like myself, my wife, and my daughter. Right, right. Well, I mean, your wife can go on your form as well as also the children if you choose to. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh yeah, that's 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 what that's where I'm at with it. I've been um. Like you know, I I, I follow uh, Brother Pan and yourself. I appreciate you guys. Um, appreciate you like, guys. bringing a lot of good yeah, information to the planet to the forefront. Right. And uh, I know that 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 process is going to be very important in the near future. Right. Because um, you know, of, of all the things that are going on, and you know, just like uh, Brother Fahim was talking about a, a couple shows ago about how they treat us because of you know what we don't what we don't exercise as far as the real you know really living outside of the law right and you know not knowing about that and um i i I'm, I'm just glad that you know we we had we had good people out there who are willing to tell us the right things and show us how to do it in a proper manner instead of being misled and thinking about other things. Right. But uh, that's basically my question for the evening. Um, I appreciate your help. And I'll be getting with you you shortly. All right. Appreciate you. All right. Peace. 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 All right, Brother Fahim. um, We near the closing mark here. Oh, okay. Um, you want to build on or say in the close? Yeah. Yeah, Not closing? Uh, as I always say, it's always a pleasure to sign up with you, brother, on the blog talk show. I appreciate you letting me uh, 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 give lectures on the last two or three weeks on your show. Oh, yeah. Uh, being, oh, yeah. Uh, you know, taking your place while you was on the road and everything. So, uh, no, appreciate I appreciate you. I've been doing it. We gonna thank you. Thank you very much. It's most appreciated of you. And uh say we're gonna keep on next week we keep on doing you know, doing some good out here. Cause I, no I, doubt. I, from the audience I see we doing a lot of good out here. You gotta keep oh, yeah. this work oh, up. Yeah. Oh yeah. Once again, check us out this weekend, September the nineteenth, twentieth and twenty first. We have our healing expo. You know you need healing. You got diabetes, you got high blood pressure, you got gout. <laughs> right. You know, you got everything that the black man has <laughs> and woman. All right, as they say. 
Right. So, <laughs> um, in order to learn the Moorish ways of healing, which is your indigenous roots, come on out and check us out. We can learn um, the Peruvian healing techniques, Qigong, Tai Chi, Reiki, Pranic healing, um, Tantra Kriya Yoga information, breathing, meditation, learn all these energy modalities so that you can help yourself and your family. That's what the key is. 